The nation of Haiti on edge tonight after their president was shot dead by gunmen in an overnight raid. His wife is in critical condition receiving treatment in the U.S. And we have just learned within the last few moments that officials in Haiti say police have arrested the assailants believed to be responsible for killing the Haitian president. Joining me now is James Pierre. He is a journalist with Haitian radio and TV. He lives in Florida now, but originally from Haiti. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, this, this is a very very timely and, and frankly scary matter. What can you tell us about the arrests now that we're learning in this investigation of the people, the assailants responsible in this murder? What we learn right now as we are going live on air from uh, police authorities of Haiti, we are learning that uh, national police were uh, chasing the mercenaries or the gang members, if you want to call them that way, uh, until the high level of Port-au-Prince called uh, Akaya, all the way reaching them out, and they were able to locate them in one abandoned house. Uh, gunshot were exchanging. Now they have multiple members uh, in custody. They want to interrogate uh, them to find out what is exactly the motive behind that. Uh, apparently, they are not only uh, Haitian uh, citizens, also some other uh, citizens from other countries. James, what type of protection and security did the president have? That's the uh, the question that everybody's asking right now. The president's supposed to have at least three to four levels of uh, security. First, there's first level of checkpoint called the CMO. They they make sure that they secure the area, especially where the president leaves, uh, who goes in, who goes out. Uh, the second level is another uh, um, department of the police, national police, uh, securing the 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 residence of the president. They are in in charge of just patrolling the area, the, the, the residents of the president. The third, which is the highest one called the SWAT, they are uh, securing the president by itself. Wherever the president go, they need to make sure that they know. They're supposed to be on the roof, supposed to be everywhere. But uh, when we are looking at the videos, it was an easy entrance and easy uh, out uh, within a couple minutes before they killed the president. To your knowledge, had there been any significant threats that had raised concern recently? There has been uh, several, and the president himself uh, sometimes uh, called them uh, and laughed uh, about it. And he was saying that uh, he is willing to continue to fight against corruption, and whoever is against him is because they are corrupted. He's willing to go for uh, upcoming elections because the international community was pushing for international uh, for upcoming elections in Haiti. We know that in 2022 we're supposed to have a new president uh, elected uh, from elections. Uh, opposition leaders were not for that, and some. The members also were arguing that this is not the right time for uh, elections. Is there a concern among other top political leaders that they also may be in danger? Absolutely. We heard from uh, another uh, prominent uh, opposition leader, uh, Moïse Jean-Charles, he was saying some other uh, gang members were taking advantage of that uh, chaotic situation to enter into his home. Uh, apparently, they stole a few items there, but nothing uh, major. Uh, but so far, many uh, leaders uh, in Haiti, they are silent about the news of the assassination of the president. Talk to us about what's happening there in terms of the humanitarian crisis, the gang violence that we're hearing so much about, what it's like living there on the streets for folks who call that home. This is an add-on to so many problems that Haiti uh, is facing right now. Remember that this is a country uh, dealing with the COVID-19. There's not even one uh, COVID vaccine in Haiti and uh, very few proper uh, testing centers. On top of it, you have about 75 to 80 percent of the population without a job. Uh, the regular Haitians uh, living in Haiti they are living only with two or five dollars, U.S. dollars a day. Um, so there are so many problems. And now the political turmoil comes in again without a president. We have a prime minister which is uh, uh, who's leading as an interim prime minister of Haiti. Um, no president, meaning no upcoming elections, meaning we're probably going to go back in 2022 without a president or a contested president. So the problem of Haiti will not be resolved soon. And James, before we let you go, I know there is a large population of the Haitian community in South Florida where you are. What is the response right now uh, to people near you about what we're seeing happen? 
shock, sad, and uh, many have spoke to throughout the day, uh, only letting me know that this is an add-on to the bad image that Haiti uh, has been receiving on the international scale. Uh, imagine you could be disagree with the president, but go inside of his uh, home uh, residence and kill him at two o'clock in the morning. I don't think this is not a part of the game, and I don't think that this is a a nice uh, thing to do when you try to pro, uh, to promote democracy in a country. So many in South Florida are against what happened. They condemned it, and they feel a little scary to go back to Haiti. Remember that many Haitians go back to Haiti in June, July. This is the end of the year. This is a time to visit a family member. This is a time to party a little bit. So now, I don't think that idea will be uh, implemented soon. Yeah, what we're hearing is chaotic and contentious and, and certainly going to impact the stability of what is already an unstable Haiti. James Pierre, uh, journalist originally from Haiti, I appreciate your, your time and your insight tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me.